to another edition of Buffalo Bills pregame, preseason game number three, Bills versus Steelers. But first, before we get to business, we have an important announcement. We do have a hundred dollar grand prize for the question of the week or topic of the week mm -hmm. uh, contest. So under our shows, you can feel free to comment and leave a suggestion for the topic of the next week's show. And if you have the best one, or we pick it randomly. At the end of the season, the winner will be randomly selected from the 16 entrants, and they will win a $100 grand prize, and we'll be giving it away at some location to be determined. But, we finally got to see the Bills in action, in uniforms. It's really nice, once the preseason starts, to have ESPN show highlights of players on the appropriate teams now. That is a nice change of pace. Mm -hmm. um, Besides highlight coverage on ESPN, what were some positive negatives that you took away from the first two weeks of the preseason for the Bills? Well, the positives are definitely the defensive line. I think it lived up to its expectations more or less. I mean, in both games there were multiple sacks, so can't complain about that. Negatives were, well, we lost, and we didn't look as good as we could have looked Can I cut you off for right the there? first season. Sure. Why does it, Marv Levy won like one or two games ever as a NFL head coach, like only one of them during his Super Bowl runs. Like, does the fact they lost matter even minuscule amount? No, but the, what, we, what I mean by we lost is when you put the first two teams together, I know it was vanilla offense, vanilla defense, but when you put the first teams together, we didn't look better than the other team, especially Minnesota. Christian Ponder ran it down our throats. Um, it took RG3 a few times to do it, but Christian Ponder, out of all people, just destroying the Bills' defense, especially in the backfield, that we, looked ugly. We also don't have like competition in really important parts of the first-string offense. These are, most, for the most part, players who are comfortable in their positions. Like, Why should we put so much stock in a game that the professional players themselves don't even put a lot of stock so, in. So, okay, so I'm just going to reverse it back to you. So you don't think it didn't matter at all? I don't say, I didn't say it doesn't matter at all, but there's no reason to get, ah, maybe it doesn't matter. There's no reason to get really worried or excited, especially in a situation where these guys aren't competing for their jobs, except for some offensive linemen, and unfortunately not the quarterback, but the positions are set. These aren't players who are out there fighting for their jobs. They're out there. Their most important mission, Ryan Fitzpatrick, most important mission for the preseason is to not get hurt. Right. I mean, when that is the number one goal, how can you say, oh, no, we lost in two series against the Redskins? True. I just would have liked to have seen a couple yes. of different things. You're a, hom you're a homer. You wanted to win no matter what. I, All just, right. I want to see some and touchdowns and or something. And you know, we got one, but still. So is that the only negative, the, the fact that our first team's lost? It's not so much losing. It just didn't look as good as they could have. A lot of, a lot of penalties. A lot of, a lot lot of penalties, numbers. and that was ridiculous. And, of course, the running subject on that is that the replacement refs, do you think that is a sign of the Bills being unprepared, being rusty, not ready for the season, or do you think this is more of a flaw with the uh, – NFL referee situation? Well, it's a combination of both. I mean, at one point they said that it was down in the end zone when it was actually down the four-yard line. They actually had to challenge that. I can't believe that. I mean, people up in the rock pile could have told you where the where the ball was spotted, you know. So it was definitely a combination of some sorts. Well, we're heading into the all-important third preseason game where the starters will play as much of a half of football where they have the main goal of not getting injured. What expectations do you have? Well, I mean, we have about a half now where we can see the first teams play against each other. So, Although maybe not giving their full effort, willing to, willing yes. to admit? Yeah, yeah, I'm, not, I'm willing to admit that. But it's still first string versus first string. So, you know, let's, let's get a touchdown on the first drive. Or a score, you know, why not? Let's stop them on their first drive. Let's, you know... Let's stop them on third down, break up some passes, and actually look like a winning franchise. Like, let's at least look the part, you know, for one of these games. Speaking of looking the part, I have recently returned from a trip to Pittsburgh doing some research as we will be attending, the Jared and I together, the Pittsburgh preseason game, sitting on the Pittsburgh side of the field. And I noticed that the majority of the men there did, in fact, wear mustaches with 80s-style bouffants. How does it look? And anyway, I'm going to fit right in, and my expectation for the first half is that every moment I see Ben Roethlisberger, I'm going to tell him exactly what I think of him, that he's a rapist. 
And that's and when that's... I expect to not see the second half, actually. Oh, there was the clip there. But and then... um, so that's my expectations for the preseason. Anything other than that is bonus, honestly. I can't wait to see Roethlisberger in person. Do you think the Steelers are going to be a good team this year when the regular season comes around? You know, honestly, I don't. And, and the reason I say that is because they're an older team now, and... You can't, they can't keep staying on the top all, all that time. And plus you have the Bengals starting to do better. You got uh, the Ravens doing pretty well. And I think they're on their last run too. So, I don't know. The Steelers lost to Denver in the playoffs. I just... Well, she I, lost to I, Jesus. I, true. There, my head had a joke there, but I won't say it. Um, so, you know, you um, you put those... I think they're going to be 7-9. That's my prediction. The Steelers? Yeah, 7-9 for the Steelers. I think they're a hard team to, to root or to, no, the easy team to root against. They're a hard team to count out. They have a good coach. If you're going to yeah. say the Steelers are on their last legs, the Ravens have to be maybe even a step further down that road. Um, saying the Bengals are up-and-comers, like, come on, that's the uh, argument you're making for your point. Like, get out of here. <laughs> I think the Steelers have a path laid ahead of them that brings them to a decent season, maybe 10-6. Ten and, ten and six. Better than the Bills. Okay. For sure better than the Bills. Um, we disagree on that one, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But you're a homer. You have an inability to see past Buffalo's greatness. But Buffalo was able to see past the lack of greatness of Sean Merriman. Any opinions on this besides two years too late? You know, this is actually interesting because I think you and I are going to disagree on this again. Um, I... I'm right. <laughs> you're right? Okay, just you're just so right. Far. Okay. I don't understand why we cut him because here's the problem. What if Mark Anderson goes out week two? What if we lose Mario Williams? You know, I mean, who's our backup now? Like, we had the depth. We still could have used him interchangeably. I personally don't understand why we didn't even try using him in the, as a linebacker in the 4-3 scheme as opposed to Arthur Motes. I mean, use, our, use the talent we have. And, yeah, he hasn't done much in the last two years, and he's extremely injury-prone, he is risky, but we do have the depth just in case, like like Arthur Motes or like uh, Chris Kelsey or whoever, if he goes down and he's already now the starter on the DN. So I just don't understand why you get rid of him. And, and now I see him going to a team like Miami or something like that. I'm just throwing that out there. Please. Um, cause he, they, no, because like, when he was on the waiver wire, Bills, Miami, and Tampa claimed him. So those are the other two teams that had moderate interest. So if he goes to Miami and suddenly starts stacking fits, then we have another Aaron Maven. Miami is, I don't know, Tampa's under new leadership, Miami's a joke. I don't know if Merriman gets picked up. I think Merriman, my first impression of when he came to Buffalo was that he didn't want to be here in the first place, and man, that impression was good. He barely saw the field. We went out to practice. He wasn't practicing. That's he true. He missed like every other practice. He was almost the definition of a non-contributor. And so we didn't need the dead weight on the team. We, there's a lot of cuts that are coming up, and I'd rather have you know the potential for him going forward is negligible, whereas we can keep someone on who's going to be able to contribute. Um, we need some depth in the backfield. The, the defensive backs are not as uh, good or performing as well as could be hoped up to this point. Is there any hopes that we have of improving that part of the defense? Uh, i got to say, and I know you're going to disagree, they just didn't look so good in the preseason. I mean, and it just reflects back to last season where third and down, teams don't worry about it. You know what I mean? They just they just throw it in the middle of the field and have a decent play. So I'm not sure what the what the answer is. I as as great as the line is, as great of our, as our starting D line is, the linebackers are lacking depth and. The defensive backs are getting older, at least our, our backups are. I mean, our backups are Terrence McGee, he's seeing second string. I mean, our starters are extremely young. So, Ron Brooks has looked very impressive, though, in the preseason. So, I'd like to see how he does at nickel and dime. But I really think the strength is going to be from our rookie linebackers learning the system. Your, your Nigel Bradhams, your Tank Carters, they need to be seeing the field a little bit more and, and showing that they can read coverage so we can have an answer for, for the, the midfield. Um, steps that people are using to get around the line. I find that mediocre talent in the defensive backfield can really expose the even more mediocre talent of future insurance salesmen during the preseason, and the defensive backs are often way overhyped, so I wouldn't get too excited about Ron Brooks personally. Okay. Um, but we did, as mentioned, we did go out to training camp, and Jared got to meet 
his personal hero? What, what would you describe Ryan Fitzpatrick as to you, Jared? I don't know. I see Fitzpatrick. I see him changing plays similar to Peyton Manning does, and I like seeing that from a Bills quarterback, someone who can read defenses and change plays in relation to it and not just say, okay, coach, I'll throw it to that guy. You know, and I like that. I like that you come to terms of settling for Peyton Manning light. I think the preseason has proved one thing, is that Vince Young very well could be the best quarterback on the roster currently constituted. And um, if, as long as Fitzpatrick stays the starting quarterback, I don't see this team being any better than 8-8. Eight and eight. I've been pouring over the schedule. I don't see, I mean, I think my official prediction is going to be 7-8-1 because I just want to see a tie see so a tie. bad. I just want to see a tie so bad. And then when we do get a tie, I could be like, called it! I can walk around for the whole week. I'll have video evidence that I called it. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait for that day. So 7-8-1 and one is my prediction for the Bills season. Missing the playoffs again, of course. There's still too many holes on the defense. The offense is filled with mediocrity and skill positions. The offensive line looks like just lions of men, but I think they need time to gel together to become a unit. They're going to be amazing in two or three years blocking for Vince Young. Um. I have a more positive aspect on the season. Surprise. I really wanted to say 10 and 6, but I don't know. I don't see us going 3 and 0 anymore those first three games. We're going to falter on one of them. I can't tell you which one. I'm thinking Chiefs for some reason. But I'm going to have to go 9 and 7. I think we have enough to to establish a winning record. And the reason for that is the latter half of the season, not the beginning. You're so down on my prediction and you only have us winning a game and a half more than I do? That's hilarious. <laughs> Still, it's better. It's yeah, better it's better. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, yay. Well, that wraps up our time for the Buffalo Bills pregame. We'll be back for the real thing, suit and tie, ready to take over. Roethlisberger, I'm coming for you. Next time, we won't be here for the Lions game. Week one versus the Jets, JTS Jets. Go, go, go. Oh, yeah, and if you guys want to see us, we'll be located in section 114, row.